I have spent the last year and a half trying to find the perfect sensitivity. Trust me when I say I know pretty much everything when it comes to settings. I played without aim assist for two months. I played on max ADS sense for about two months as well. I don't know why I did that, but I did it. All of this led up to where I am now in knowing pretty much everything about ALC settings. So today I'm going to be showing you guys my personal ALC settings as well as showing you guys how to tweak them to your liking to find that perfect sweet spot. But before we get into that, my name is Misery. I produce controller movement content. So if you like that style of content, consider subscribing and hitting that like button. It helps me out a ton. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Enjoy. All right, so this video is purely here to serve as a guide to ALC settings. As you guys know, I have made plenty of settings guides in the past in which I've gone through pretty much every single setting throughout the game, gameplay, video settings, audio settings, all that stuff. And I kind of just glance over the actual ALC settings part when I truly believe it's the most important part. So that's why today's video's focus is just going to be on the ALC settings aspect of everything. We're going to be taking you guys through every single setting so you guys know exactly how to customize your settings to your preference. Also, note that your controller definitely does matter when it comes to settings. If you're on PlayStation, you'll naturally have a higher stick tension. Stick tension is how hard you have to pull in the joystick for it to register. And because default PlayStation controllers come with a higher stick tension, that's definitely going to affect your settings. That's why my settings are going to be way different from last time when I was on an Xbox controller. So just keep that in mind. Throughout the video, however, I will explain what settings are the most important to take note of depending on your controller. All right, with all that yappage out of the way, let's get into the very first ALC setting. All right, so first, I'm going to show you guys what the default ALC settings looks like in game. As you can see, it's extremely slow. It has a turn up speed, which I'll explain later. And the dead zone is very, very high. I'm pushing my controller so much right now, and it's not registering at all. That's exactly what we don't want. So let's get into the very first setting, which is dead zone. Obviously, dead zone is how far you have to push the analog stick for it to register in game. About 99% of content creators are going to tell you to turn your dead zone all the way up to the point that you don't have stick drift. And I'm here to tell you the exact opposite. I currently play on zero dead zone, but that's just because I've been taking it to the extreme. What I suggest is that you try out zero to three. Anywhere in between that is the perfect zone. And before you flood the comments with a bunch of hate saying how, oh, the stick drift is going to mess up my aim. Trust me, it will not. Find the zero point in your controller and reset to that every single time you're not shooting somebody. Trust me, a low dead zone may seem like it's going to affect your aim, but it actually won't. If you pair a high dead zone with a high stick tension, you have the recipe for disaster. It's going to be way harder to get that flashy movement stuff that everybody looks for. So that's why it's 10 times more important to play a lower dead zone on PlayStation than it is on Xbox. Xbox, I still suggest it. I played anywhere from zero to three on Xbox as well. However, it's just that much more crucial on PlayStation. With Dead Zone out of the way, let's get into Outer Threshold. Actually, I just lied. First, I'm gonna tell you guys about a little thing that we're doing over my Twitch channel. Pretty much, I'm about to be partnered for exactly one year over my Twitch, so I'm gonna be doing a subathon in which I'm gonna be giving away a completely free customized PlayStation controller. So if that interests you, then either join my Discord server or follow my Twitch right now. Both of those links will be in the description. All right, now let's actually get into Outer Threshold. To put it into simple terms, your Outer Threshold will determine how fast your view rotates when moving the joystick to its maximum position. I really just like to think of it as a little speed boost. On default, it's going to be set to 2, and this is where I suggest you stay around for Xbox controllers. However, for a PlayStation controller, I suggest that you play on anywhere from 3 to 4. For me, switching to this PlayStation controller was very difficult purely because of the stick tension, and I found that the Outer Threshold being turned up just a tiny bit helped wonderfully. So if you're on Xbox, play 1 or 2, and then if you're on PlayStation, play 3 or 4. Alright, now response curve. If you've ever played default settings, then you would know that your response curve can be determined right here. It can either be on Classic, it can be on Steady, it can be on Fine Aim, it can be on High Velocity, or it can be on linear. The two most popular are linear and classic. The great advantage of using ALC setting is that it allows you to customize it to your personal preference. So that said, I would personally spend a little bit of time in the range, starting off at zero, which is linear if you didn't know, trying that out. And if you didn't like it, turning it up slowly, 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 just turning it up one notch at a time, until you find that very, very sweet spot. For me personally though, I will stick to linear just because I find it easier to aim with. All right, and now per optic settings. Your per optic settings is actually way more important than you may think. Most people, including myself, stick to one times. However, if on certain sites, your settings just feel a little bit too slow, you could always come here and just customize it for that site alone. Personally, I like playing with a flicky style when it comes to any kind of snipers. So what I have done is I've set my six times, eight times, and 10 times all to 1.4. Uh, however, this can be different depending on your play style. Something else that I may suggest is turning your one time slash iron sight down to 0 0.08. I don't know what it is about it, but just setting it to 0 0.08 just gives it that tiny bit more accuracy. All right. And now with all that out of the way, let's get into yaw and pitch speed. Pretty much yaw is how fast your sensitivity is going to be from left to right. And pitch is going to be how fast your sensitivity is going to be from up to down. 
Now about six months into my Apex career, I decided to switch to ALCs and play Max Sense. It was kind of a tough switch, but I definitely do recommend it. However, if you are just now switching from any kind of low sense, I cannot stress enough slowing down the whole process of switching to max sense by playing hybrid sense. If I turn off my ALC settings and I go to default settings right here, you'll notice that if I move my thumbstick, it starts off slow and speeds up. This is called turning extra sensitivity. It has a base value for your sensitivity and then adds on to it. So whenever your aim assist is activated, it goes to that base value, which is a lower sense that makes it easier to aim. And then once you switch off, it takes a few seconds but then you'll get to the max sense with the turning extra. So the reason why I'm pointing this out to you guys is because if you're switching from any kind of default setting to ALCs, you do not want to cold switch all the way to max sense. Instead, do this. Turn your yaw and pitch speed up to somewhere around 250 to 300. Just like this. Now, turn your turning extra yaw and pitch all the way up. And then turn off all ramp up time. This is going to make it as responsive as possible. Now you'll have max sense whenever you're not looking at somebody. But the moment you look at somebody, you'll get that 250-250, which can really, really help with aim. This is a fantastic way to ease yourself into max sense as you can still maintain decent aim. However, as you progress, I suggest turning it up from 250 to 300 and then from 300 to 350. And then once you get around the 400 to 450 range, just completely turn off turning extra and then see how that feels. But if you're just now trying to get into faster sense, which I highly do suggest, not only because it's way more fun, but also because you can do way better movement and in some cases have better aim. Don't listen to the pros. 4-3 linear is literally just a crutch. Then this tip is perfect for you. I do want to touch on the ramp up time as well as the ramp up delay. If you feel that you're hitting that turning extra too fast, then you can turn up the ramp up time. I've never personally used it, but again, if you feel that it's switching from the default sense to the extra yaw and pitch too fast, then you can always try this out. The same goes with delay. The delay is just how long it takes for it to end. All right, and with those out of the way, let's get straight into the ADS sense, which is arguably the most important sense for winning your gunfights. All right, so this is the default ADS sense, 110, 75, a little bit of turning extra, as well as a ramp up time. Now, when you aim down sight, you want the smoothest experience possible. And that's why I suggest disabling the turning extra yaw and pitch speed completely, as well as the turn up ramp up time and delay, because obviously without the turning extra, uh, those two settings don't make a difference either way. As of recently, I've been playing on 150 and 130. This is just what feels great to me. Let me explain exactly why I don't keep my ADS yaw and pitch speed exactly the same. I want you to envision a fight. How often are you tracking up and down? Maybe a Valkyrie, a Horizon lifting, or maybe even tracking up a zipline. Now I want you to think of how many times you're tracking on the horizontal plane. Probably a lot more, right? Well, at the end of the day, the lower your sense is for ADS, the more consistent you're gonna be able to keep your aim. And that's why I decided to keep my aim a little bit lower on the up and down aspect because it's not as necessary. It gives me that tiny bit of extra stability that I desperately needed when I was on no aim assist and max ADS sense. I have found that 150, 130 is the lowest I can go as a movement player without having to un-ADS while bunny hopping, uh, sliding, wall bouncing, all that stuff. So if you are a movement player, I highly suggest playing anywhere from 150 uh, all the way up to 200. Now, if you are not a movement player, playing anywhere from 120 uh, down to around 100, maybe 90 if you want to push it, is going to be your sweet spot as well. And then I think it goes without saying, but the uh, last two settings, obviously. Pretty much everybody wants to play with them on. Um, now I've walked you through how to make your own settings. I will also flash my personal settings at the moment, uh, just in case you want to start with that and then build off of that later. Um, so here they are. Currently play a 0% dead zone, 4% out of threshold, 0% response curve, per optics, just like I showed you guys in the tutorial. Uh, Yawn pitch speed 500 500 maxed out. I've been playing this for a very long time now, so I've gotten used to it. Uh, ADS yaw and pitch speed 150 130, and then everything else set to zero. Remember, we're doing a free customized controller giveaway over on my Twitch, so make sure to follow over there. And if you like this video, you're definitely gonna like this one as well. Peace.